Hello everyone, I'm Ike through 4th and Psychic Gamers, and today I'm going to be talking about Call of Duty Ghost Point Streak Rewards. In the background there's some pretty good kill confirmed gameplay on Uplink, using my trusty gold MP7 with quick draw and suppressor, and with the perks Hardline, Lightweight, Fast Hands and Dexterity. For equipment I've got a Tactical Insurgent and a Frag Grenade. And finally the score streaks, UAV, Care Package, Lodestar. Anyway enough about the gameplay, the beginning here kind of sucks but it does get better. On to the topic of today which is Call of Duty Ghost Killstreak Rewards. If you've played Modern Warfare 3 then you're going to be familiar with the system that Call of Duty Ghost is using. In previous games you earned rewards simply by getting kills which is why they were called Killstreaks, a term that a lot of people still use now. In Modern Warfare 3 they finally decided that they should probably give objective players some rewards for doing their job. Not every game mode is simply about the kills. So in came the point streak system. Still gave you one point for each kill, but you also got a point for doing objective based things such as capturing flags, planting and defusing bombs, obviously depending on the game modes. They also split up the streak rewards into three different categories, assault, support and specialist, each with its own distinct reward style and method of earning. Black Ops 2 made further adjustments to this system. Despite the fact that Black Ops 2 improved or at least changed this system further, Infinity Ward have decided against using Triarch's score streak system and have instead returned to Modern Warfare 3's point streak style. So let's take a look at what we're going to be using this time around. Starting with the assault package, these rewards are designed to kill the enemy for you. Your streak resets when you die. The first reward is the SATCOM at 3 points. This is a replacement for the UAV of previous games. It's now a ground based device, not an aerial vehicle like previously. Which does mean that it can be taken out by regular weapons rather than needing a launcher to take it out of the sky, however it does mean that SATCOMs can now be hidden. UAV spam has been a real problem in previous Call of Duty titles. To stop the same thing happening to SATCOMs, Infinity Ward have made them a lot weaker. On their own they're not very good at all, however in groups they can be a real help. This does however rely on multiple people running SATCOMs and using them simultaneously. If you have only one out, it will only show enemies on the radar that you or your team can actually see. Two SATCOMs out simultaneously will give the functionality of the UAV from previous games, sweeping the map every few seconds and showing players positions. Three SATCOMs simultaneously will give the functionality of Modern Warfare 3's advanced UAV which sweeps the map and displays the enemy's position and direction. Next is the IMS which costs 5 points. The IMS is a ground based device that is triggered by enemy movement. When a target is in sight, it launches an explosive towards them. It's got a reserve of 4 explosives so that's a potential of 4 more points towards your point streak. Alternatively for 5 points you could have the guard dog which is a brand new kill streak. The guard dog follows you around and attacks enemies that get in your way as well as growling when enemy players are nearby. For 6 points you can get a sentry gun. These are pretty underappreciated in Black Ops 2 you don't see a lot of them around but with some good positioning they can definitely put in some work. Alternatively you can have a battle hind which is pretty much the attack helicopter from previous games and it flies around the map under AI control and shoots at enemies. 7 points allows you to get a vulture which is a low flying dual rotor drone that attacks enemies. It's got a little machine gun on it however I don't think it's player controlled so whether this is going to be effective we'll have to wait and see. There is another streak available at 7 points however we don't know what it is yet. 8 points will get you a quad rotor drone which is player controlled and this time around fires explosives rather than just bullets. Which is a good thing because the shooting of the quad rotor in Black Ops 2 is absolutely dreadful. You're also able to see enemies through walls now, sort of targets them in a red square even if they're behind cover. At 9 points is the Juggernaut Maniac. Juggernaut armor is airdropped to you and when you equip it you'll get a Juggernaut suit which will give you a lot of extra damage protection and a knife. However, unlike the Juggernauts in Modern Warfare 3, the Maniac is going to be really fast so using the knife is actually going to be a viable option and you're just going to sprint around the battlefield stabbing people. At 10 points you can get a regular Juggernaut which is airdropped in with a minigun however due to the weight of the weapon you won't be really sprinting anywhere going to have very slow movement with this thing. At 12 points is the Helo Pilot which sounds kind of similar to the gunship out of Black Ops 1 where you're going to be able to control the helicopter's position around the battlefield and shoot down on enemies with machine guns and missiles. The highest assault kill streak requires 15 points. We don't know the name of this thing or even what it does yet however in the trailer we did get a brief shot of this point streak in action 
and it allows you sort of an aerial view of the battlefield and then you're given the option to drop one of four things an airdrop, a juggernaut, a small rod and a large rod it's not immediately apparent why this would be useful or helpful to you or why this is worthy of being the highest assault kill streak in the game. I guess we'll just have to wait until footage of this thing emerges so we can see what's actually going on here. So that's everything in the assault strike package. Let's talk about support. Support point streaks were added in Modern Warfare 3 and they allowed you to continue your streak even when you died. As a result of this they are very easy to acquire. However, to counter that, they do cost quite a few more points than you would expect if they were in the regular assault package. Also, as the name suggests, they are very supportive, providing limited lethal capabilities. In Modern Warfare 3, there still were streaks that could get you kills. The stealth bomber in particular was very annoying. But for ghosts, they are promising that they're going to be purely support streaks. Let's go through them. At four points, you're going to be able to have a SATCOM, which is exactly the same as the Assault Package SATCOM, or at least as far as we know. At six points, Ballistic Vests. These are returning from Modern Warfare 3. You chuck them down on the ground, and then you and your teammates can take them. Anyone wearing a Ballistic Vest will take a little bit more damage before dying, so it's really useful for supporting your team, especially if there's somebody going for long Assault kill streaks who needs the extra damage protection. This is something that we saw quite a lot of in coordinated Modern Warfare 3 gameplays. At 8 is a box of guns. Now unfortunately we only have the name here and it's unconfirmed how this works. Rumours are that you're going to get a random gun out of it. However that seems kind of stupid. Why would you want a random weapon when your class most likely has a weapon that you've set up and tweaked so it's the best weapon for you to use. Although as I said this is completely unconfirmed as to how this works so I guess we'll just have to wait and see. At 9 points is a Night Owl, which is a sort of floating ball thing that follows you around. This is kind of a combination of a trophy system and a motion sensor. It's going to show people up on your minimap and it will deflect any projectiles that come in your direction. At 10 points is a Maws, an M-A-A-W-S, which is a rocket launcher that fires a rocket that splits into two and then is guided by the laser. Despite them saying there aren't going to be any lethal kill streaks in the support package, the Moors does sound like it has strong potential to be able to kill people if you fire it into a high traffic area. I'm not really sure what they're expecting you to do with this, especially since it's not lock on. At 12 points, we've got the Ground Jammer, which is an EMP style streak, however, it only disables ground based kill streaks. Alternatively, also at 12 points, you have Air Superiority, which is an anti air aircraft. It's a jet that flies in and can take down airborne kill streaks. So it's kind of split the EMP in two in terms of being an anti kill streak kill streak. At 13 points is a support squad mate, and you can just about make this out in the trailer. They very briefly uh, pass over this point streak when they're flicking through them. It's got a little emblem with a man holding a riot shield and a description says get behind the guy with a riot shield so it sounds like they're actually going to spawn in an AI character with a riot shield to help you out. In the reveal trailer they talked a lot about their new improved AI for combat training style things such as the squads mode so it would make sense that they could finally add in a human AI controlled character to multiplayer. Also at 13 kills is a heli sniper, calls in a small helicopter with you acting as a sniper perched on the side. It's player controllable, you can order the helicopter to move around the map while taking control of the sniper on the side and shooting down at people below. The skill streak ends when either the helicopter is destroyed or the sniper is killed. 14 points is an oracle, there's a lot of rumour around this one including one that suggests this may actually be a cloaking device that makes your character partly invisible. And there does actually seem to be footage in the reveal trailer that suggests this is true. However, this isn't confirmed. Also at 14 points is the Juggernaut Recon, which drops in a Recon Juggernaut with a personal radar. If it's like Modern Warfare 3, you won't have any good weapons, just a pistol. But you do have a radar that sort of pings out around you and locates enemies on the minimap. Finally at 16, we have that weird unknown kill streak that drops in the airdrop and the juggernaut and the rods so that's going to be available in both assault and support that's all the support streaks discussed the final thing to talk about would be specialist however we really don't have much to talk about yet so that's all the point streaks covered and i'm going to end the video here hope you've enjoyed it if you did please think about leaving a rating comment any of your opinions and questions and if you want to keep up to date with call of duty ghost news and you haven't already make sure you hit subscribe i shall see you next time